2023 was such a great year for me and I truly believe it's because of the intentions I set going into the year. Whether this year was great for you or wasn't so great for you, I think that it's really important to step into the new year with a clean slate. In today's video, we are resetting for 2024 with the intentions to make this year the best one yet. I'm super excited for this new year's energy, so let's reset together. While I get ready for the day, I thought that we can go through and scroll through kind of like my photos from January till now and just reassess and talk about and reflect on what happened to me this year and kind of give you guys a 2023 yearly recap. I have never done this in one of my reset videos before, but I kind of just thought of this idea and I was like, if I did a little short few recap, that would be really nice to look back on and have. So easy to forget what happened to you throughout the year since time flies by so so fast you're never going to remember everything and that's why i love documenting things and taking a lot of videos and photos so let's get into it i also just made myself a coffee so cheers to 2024 this year honestly did not go as i was expecting at all i had one kind of vision i guess you could say of how i thought that this year was gonna go and it kind of took a turn and things just happened and it's just funny how you can set goals you can you know manifest things but from how you get from point a to b sometimes isn't gonna look the way that you think it is which is why when you're manifesting something you have to let go of the how and just focus on what you want because you don't know how the universe is going to deliver your manifestations to you so you just have to be open to receiving it anyway so let's look back in january in my photos to january 1st so the first week of january i actually was staying at my parents house we got my dad a puppy for christmas so i kind of stayed at their house for that first week to help out with the puppy as much as I could because obviously having a puppy is a lot of work. That was a really fun time spending time with my family and with the puppy. January, I was on my grind. I was making a lot of motivational content on my YouTube and that's when I really realized that I'm really good at making motivational content and people really like it. My channel really started to pick up around that time. January, I was really focusing on eating healthy, having a really good balanced lifestyle and that's when I made my waking up at 5 a.m. for a week video and I just thought that I was going to do it for the video but it ended up actually sticking and for the whole month of January, I was waking up at 5 a.m. A little con for last January was that I was really struggling with my eczema which was really really hard on me it was all around my eyes and kind of underneath here and on my neck and I'm just seeing now at the end of January I ended up getting sick I remember that was a pretty bad cold the biggest thing that happened to me in January was getting the email that me and Joel had been kicked out of our apartment that really changed the trajectory of our year more than we can ever imagine i was up one night it was like maybe 10 11 p.m joel was sleeping and i get an email usually i don't check emails at that time but i saw that it was from our landlord so i opened it and the email was saying that our landlord was moving back in and we have to be out by the end of february so just before march 1st I almost couldn't breathe after this because I was like, what in the world? We did not plan this. We did not expect this. This was like right after doing my New Year's reset. And I was like, looks like things are just going to be taking a turn here. A few days before I got that email, me and Joel were just like really craving to travel. But we just wanted to hold off on it for a bit. We were just like, you know what? We'll stay in this apartment for maybe another year. And then we'll assess from there because we really, really loved our apartment. And we were just like, you know what? If it's meant to be, it'll happen. Like the universe will put things in front of us for it to all unfold and we just like really trusted the universe and then literally a few days later that's when we get the email like you're kicked out of your apartment so we took that as a sign because we never anticipated being kicked out of our apartment we just always thought that we were going to be able to leave at our own pleasure so we were both very 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 shocked the rest of january i was just kind of in denial and i was just still living my best life excited nervous scared not knowing what's to come because we had to move in two months but let's dive into February now. So February, I was really much still on my health grind. I went to my first workout class basically ever. Honestly, February was a lot of prep for moving out because we had to be out by the end of the month. So we were kind of organizing the U-Haul, how we're going to be moving out, when we're going to start packing. I was getting all that kind of together. Meanwhile, still, I was really on my grind in my routine because it was still the beginning of the year. So I was super motivated. End of February, we moved out. It was February 27. We got the U-Haul. Everything was packed up. This is the current state of our place. Joel's not looking too happy over there. He's looking pretty stressed. Boxes. Last time, we'll be There's seeing this bedroom. Boxes. 
having some struggle here unlocking. Ugh. Oh my goodness, I need to go back inside. It is freezing cold. Goodbye to this beautiful, beautiful couch. Last day, I mean last night in the apartment, we set up this little cozy fort with the TV on the floor because the TV console is gone. But anyways, it's such a vibe right now. And we made a little bed on the floor. And then the TV's right here with my food. How cozy is that? It was really tough moving because we felt like we had just moved into the apartment and there was parts of us where we were really, really sad because we definitely thought we were gonna be there for a longer amount of time. But on the other hand of it, we were really happy because it felt like a fresh start and obviously this was all meant to be because we were literally getting kicked out. We had no other choice but to leave. So it's like, you can only be so sad because it wasn't even in your control. End of February 28 was our last day in the apartment. We said goodbye to our first ever apartment together which we love that apartment is gonna forever be with me Brittany just came up to help us clean but anyways this is the last goodbye crying my eyes out on this couch this is the state of everything right now it's currently 154 we have a few hours left in this place but we gotta get rid of everything else I think I'm gonna get like the address tattooed on me because I love that apartment so much and it just has such a big significance to us it was pretty heart-wrenching but at the same time we knew that it was all meant to be and better things were to come. February, we also booked our tickets to Portugal and our flights and our Airbnb and we decided that we were just going to travel because we were like, this is obviously what the universe is trying to get us to do. We officially booked our trip. So now we're at the beginning of March. First half of the month, I had some videos pre-filmed that I did in the apartment that I was uploading. Nobody knew that I had moved out yet. All our stuff was moved back into my parents' house. I took over back my old bedroom in the house, but all my clothes in it it was so much work moving but thankfully we had sold our couch and our bed frame and just like big things that we didn't want to bring with us to my parents house but i did put all my personal belongings back into my bedroom which i don't think my mom was too happy about because she was using that as her own storage room but sorry mom looking back we totally could have gotten a storage locker but we didn't really know what we were doing and how long we were gonna be so we were just really playing it by ear and my parents were really nice enough to let me put my stuff back in the house so it was very very, very, very grateful for that. And Joel put his stuff back in his parents' house. So the first two, three weeks of March, um, I was living with my family again. Honestly, this is when I just completely fell out of my routine. I wasn't really working out that often. I just felt really kind of out of place because I just felt like I couldn't film content in my house and I didn't know what to do. That's why I had pre-filmed. So I was just in a weird slump area of my life where I was waiting to leave for Europe. Honestly, it just feels like a blur in my timeline. But honestly, it was really nice just to spend that quality time with my family before me and Joel did leave. Around mid-March, I hit 150,000 subscribers. Madison made me the cutest cake. It was such a cute surprise. March 17 rolls around, which was my birthday. My siblings took me out. We went to the zoo, which is so random, but we went to go see some animals because it was a nice day, and we went out for breakfast, and it was just a really chill, fun day. I turned 23. On March 19, me, Talia, Madison, Kaisha went to the SZA concert, and that was amazing. And then on March 26th, my parents had a going away party for me and Joel, which was the sweetest thing ever. And we all had like brunch together as a family. But then on March 27th, me and Joel officially left for Portugal. This was like really exciting to me. I also cried at the airport leaving my sister because I was pretty sad, honestly. And I was really excited, but I was also really nervous because this was our first time ever traveling by ourselves further away way than we're used to so this was like a big step for us and then we got to Portugal it blew us away we were just like so happy to be there the weather was amazing I remember the uber ride to our Airbnb and I was just like holy crap we're starting a new chapter right now and it was just really a surreal moment for us we're like the fact that we're able to just pick up and go is such a blessing and everything just kind of sunk in in that moment and we're like we really did create this dream life for ourselves I'm gonna fast forward over here to April we were living in Portugal. Honestly, I was just living my best life. I didn't really have a prominent routine. I just took the week and adjusted to the time zone because I was really jet lagged. We were just living our best life in Portugal. We went out to eat every single meal. We went to a cafe every single day. We went to the beach every day. I was doing yoga on the beach all the time. We were there for Easter, which was weird because we couldn't spend it with our families, but it was still fun. We went out for dinner. Yeah, then I started to get more into a routine as the month went on. I started like waking up a little earlier, reading every morning, doing yoga on the beach 
beach. It was just crazy being in a place where it was just constantly sunny every single day and really nice and hot. And there was like a little private beach there where there wasn't many people. So it felt like we had the whole place to ourselves because we went to a really quiet area. And then it was Joel's birthday on April 11. I took him out for dinner. Then we went to Lisbon in mid-April, which was really fun. And I loved the city so much. We would go on walks every single day along the beach, like the shoreline. We would watch the sunset. And that was basically April. Fast forward to May. I'm looking at my photos right now. Basically the same thing. Just filming videos, taking photos, living our best life, tanning on repeat. We really kind of were missing the element of home. We had never been away for that amount of time before. And so we really started missing just like having our home base and living out of a suitcase was kind of getting just a little bit frustrating. I just missed all having all my stuff with me and you know we missed our families, we missed our friends and we were kind of stuck in a place where we were like okay what do we do now? And at this point Madison, my sister and her boyfriend Connor had booked tickets out to come see us and we were going to travel to the Algarve which is the south of Portugal and we were really looking forward to that because we missed everybody. Not that we got lonely because we had each other so thank God but we were just missing home like we were a little bit homesick I would say and then we were like okay let's start manifesting a home then because if we want to come back home then we kind of wanted a bigger space because our two bedroom apartment was just feeling a little bit small for us because we wanted more storage so every single day in May we just walked the boardwalk and like verbally manifested things so that was basically the beginning of May mid May Connor and Madison get there and that was just the best day ever we were so excited we took a three hour I think it was three hour train ride to the south of Portugal, which was so much fun. We started getting into more of a routine here together. We all got a gym membership. We were going to the gym. We were getting smoothies at their smoothie place. We were going to the beach every day to tan. We were going out for dinner, cooking together in our apartment there. And it was honestly just like such a fun time. We went on little day trips to other places in Portugal so we can like discover more of the cities and stuff. And then at the end of May, we left for our first city and we left all our stuff at the apartment in Portugal. So we still had the apartment in Portugal because it was booked for that whole month. And then we were like, okay, let's take a week and go travel other places because we're in Europe. So we went to Italy. That was amazing. One of my favorite places I've ever been to. It was so beautiful there. We went to the Amalfi Coast. Go watch my Italy vlog if you haven't already. I think that's my favorite video of 2023. So Italy was amazing. And then we went to France, which we got in a little hiccup there with our Airbnb. I'm not going to go into it. But the trip, I have a France vlog up to, which you should go check out. We saw the Eiffel Tower. We went to Disney land paris which was really fun then we went to london honestly we kind of really poorly planned the trip so we didn't stay in london for very long because of the times of our flight and stuff but anyways we did get to see a bit of london which was really nice and then we went back to portugal and the rest of our trip there was just beaches going on walks having fun partying a little bit so in june mid early june we got back home we all took a train ride back to lisbon and we were all on the same flight back home me and joe really had no idea what was to come for us because we were manifesting getting a home when we flew back we just stayed with my parents again so that was really nice of them to you know allow us to stay there while we were looking for a place because we couldn't find a place while we were in Portugal you know you want to tour a place before you commit to it so that was very unrealistic so once we got back in June we started looking for a place we weren't sure if we were going to do another apartment like a three bedroom or you know rent a house so we just kept looking and touring and things were just very unmotivating because the rental market here in Vancouver is so crazy it's just really hard to find somewhere and the price is just shot up way high we ended up touring a few places finally stumbled upon this place we were so happy because we got it and it took us a month and a bit to find a place it seemed like the market was just really really dry at the time while we were living at home you know it was such a fun time spending time with my family but we were just really excited to start a new chapter and get a new place also this period of my life i was very much not in a routine again because i was at my parents house kind of in between fast forward to beginning of july we started to move into our new place it was prime summertime, which was amazing. This whole month consisted of just finding furniture, you know, made that move in vlog. And it was just really refreshing. And I was really, really excited to kind of like start our new, not our new life, but just have a kind of a fresh start in a new place and then august rolls around basically still decorating the house slowly getting back into a routine going to oxygen yoga and fitness that was my first month going there and i love it and i've been going there till this day because i love it so much and yeah going on lots of walks working out a lot towards the end of august we went to joel's cabin with his family and it was such a good time so relaxing i took the whole few days that we were there off of work and we just chilled reset went to the aritzia warehouse 
warehouse sale and then september rolls around i was really excited for fall me and joel had seen so much sun this past year because of portugal it was sunny there every single day and we're not really used to the, having that much sun you know we live in vancouver so we were just honestly really excited for a season change because we had felt like we'd been in summer for the past like six months yeah september i was in my a good routine making those fall videos towards the end of september we left to montreal for my cousin's wedding like i already forgot about this that's crazy how time flies but we went to montreal for just i think even less than a week maybe we went for such a short amount of time yeah it was because my cousin taylor and her husband joey were getting married so we obviously had to pull up most of my family lives in montreal if you guys didn't know this so it was really nice seeing all my cousins because i hadn't seen them in like three years or way more actually it's like five years i don't even know i didn't get much photos from that trip whatsoever because it was so short and like i was just trying to be in the moment but that was a really good way to end off september then october rolled around really tried to soak in the fall vibes went to the pumpkin patch mid-october my cousins ended up visiting from the states they came for just the weekend stayed at my parents house i went to go stay there with them so then i can like spend a lot of time with them and i ended up getting sick the first day that i got there like i got the body flu or something i missed out on a lot of time with them which sucked but i tried to spend as much time as i could with them while being sick which was really bad timing november rolls around this is a lot more recent so it's like fresh in the memory november we kind of transformed our house a little bit we put up curtains went to ikea a lot because i just wanted to finish our house i really am obsessed with how the curtains turned out i went christmas decor shopping went on lots of nature walk and november is actually when i started to make my daily morning routine videos on tiktok because i kind of had that idea so go follow me on tiktok i'm taking a break for the rest of december on those but they're gonna restart back in january so go follow me on tiktok for more content but that basically sums up my year like i said this year did not go as i expected like whatsoever we had no idea that we would be going to europe for three months like that is actually insane that that even happened this year but it just goes to show that once you just open your heart up and your mind Mind up to all the possibilities that the universe is willing to put in front of you things actually start to happen so if you want to manifest something never focus on the how just focus on what you want it will happen just might not unfold exactly like you thought in your head yeah so that was my 2023 recap i hope you enjoyed that i would suggest you guys do the same thing start in january from your photos and see what happened to you this year because sometimes it's really hard to remember all the little things and it's nice to kind of just do a little recap on your year i guess but yeah thanks for listening to that let's get into the rest of the reset so i did a huge clean and reset for my house but i actually filmed a whole entire video for this so if you guys want to watch that i will leave a link to it down below but i did include just a few clips for this video since this was part one of the reset cleaning is definitely a huge part in a new year reset for me because i can't do anything without cleaning my house first because having a messy house just directly correlates to my mental health when it's clean i'm happy when it's not clean i just feel like a mess so this was really really needed and i definitely recommend if you guys are planning on doing a new year reset to start with just cleaning your space because it'll make you feel so good so enjoy these few cleaning clips and don't forget to go check out the full video if you haven't already This notebook right here which i wrote all of my 2023 goals in which we're gonna sit down and review right now so i feel like a really important part about writing goals is also going back and reflecting on them periodically through the year and also when the timeline ends for those goals if you guys hear a dog snoring in the background 
It's Joel's family's dog that we're babysitting right now, so you can ignore it. <laughs> but he's having a good slumber down there right now. But okay, for 2023, I made some pretty big goals. One of them was to reach 500,000 subscribers, which didn't happen, but I know it will happen eventually when that aligns. So am I mad that I didn't hit it? Not at all, because I know it's gonna happen. But if anything, it just makes it even more motivating to get that this year. For YouTube, I just really wanted to have a very engaged audience, which I feel like I really have now. And I'm so grateful for everybody who watches my videos. I wanted to start posting on TikTok more often this year. And I kind of did that more towards the end of the year, but I definitely posted more this year. For my lifestyle goals this year, I wrote to stay focused and to stick to a schedule, which I definitely prioritized this year. And I feel like I really did for the majority of the year. Content plan every month, which I did. Put lots of effort into my content, unique video ideas, one to two YouTube videos a week, stick to daily to-do lists and don't procrastinate, stick to a good morning routine that makes you feel good. I definitely feel like I did do all those things this year. This year is very much routine oriented. For my travel category, which is interesting, I said go to Coachella 2023, Hawaii, California. Funny because I did not end up going to Coachella, but our year did take a turn and we were in Europe during Coachella. So I mean, I didn't even have Europe on my travel goals, but things just unfolded that way, which is funny. But I did want to travel this year, which I did unexpectedly. For my health, I said stay consistent in the gym, healthy breakfast, work on stretching, regulate hormones, movement five times a week. I feel like this year I really fixed my eczema. In the middle of the year, I did a gluten dairy free diet. I've been doing it for like six months now and it has drastically helped my eczema. When I went to Europe, I was eating gluten, I was eating dairy, but the weather in Europe, I don't know what it was in Portugal, but it made my eczema completely go away. And then when I got back home from that trip my eczema started to flare again and I was getting really frustrated so then I decided to do the gluten dairy free diet and I was really only eating whole foods nothing processed really limiting my sugar intake as well my skin has never been better ever since cutting those things out and I'm a bit more lenient now since I've been doing it for so long but my eczema has knock on wood completely gone away and I feel like I've really regulated my hormones with this diet I'm really really grateful for that and it is a lot of hard work to stick to this diet but it's for the better and I know it's gonna make me happy in the long run. I had some financial goals written in here that I'm not gonna dive into but this year has been my best year financially which of course it should be getting better every year so I'm very thankful for that so I did accomplish my goals for that. In terms of my spirituality goals I wrote to read a new spiritual book, meditate more often, connect more with my higher self which I feel like I really did and I did read a new spiritual book this year and then in this book I also just have a couple of journal entries that I really wish that I kept up with more but I only only did one to five entries but I'm still gonna use this notebook to write my new goals for 2024 because I just want to use this notebook for every single year until it runs out and then I'll get a new one realize now writing my goals last year I was very much number oriented like oh I want to reach 500,000 subscribers on YouTube but going forward I really want to structure my goals in a different way where instead of saying that I want to just write kind of more so habit goals that I want to achieve rather than numbers because the numbers and the algorithm like everything like that is completely out of your control. You can have number goals. I feel like that is important but at the same time what's even more important is more so just having step by step what you're going to do to achieve that number because that is more realistic and then who knows, maybe that number is even gonna be tripled. Even though this year did not go as I expected it to go whatsoever, it was probably the most adventurous, spontaneous year of my life and I'm so grateful for it. And we're just so much more grateful for having our home base and living in Vancouver now. I'm just really sensing good energy going into 2024 and what this year is gonna bring on. But yeah, I'm really excited to write new goals out for this year. If you're looking back at your goals from last year and you realize that you kind of let yourself down and you didn't accomplish, as much as you wanted to accomplish maybe you had a rough year don't bring that energy into 2024 it is your journey and everything is happening for a reason in your life and as long as you're always making decisions from your heart and not out of fear and you're taking the opportunities that you want to take then you have nothing to worry about because you're on the right path in life you're gonna get to where you want to be the timeline might just not be what you expected but you will get there this year what I'm gonna definitely make a point of doing is referring back to my goals more because I kind of just wrote this down this year and let it sit. I wasn't really referring to it that often. I just feel like it's really important to also just hold yourself accountable to these things and having a reason why is so important to your goals and feeling motivated and being determined every day because if you don't have a reason why, then you're never going to want to do anything. You have to have a driving force behind your actions or else nothing is going to ever get done. 
for the next step of this reset, I'm going to be lighting some incense. And we are going to just cleanse our energy. Do a bit of an energetic cleanse. This is a little cute own incense. Get your negative energies out as well. But I'm just going to clean. Mm, this smells so good clear up my space a little bit remove negative energy and just like put some positive vibes in the air but i'm gonna put that back here so what we're gonna do right now before we set our goals and intentions for 2024 is do a goal kind of meditation so i'm gonna search on youtube meditation for setting goals and hopefully it's gonna help me envision kind of what i want looking into 2024 and meditation always really just clears my mind and helps me in a lot of ways so i got my laptop right here I'm just gonna go on YouTube and see what there is. Meditation for goal setting. Here we go. Okay, I found a meditation. I'm gonna put it up on there so you guys can see the screen while I'm doing it. And let's meditate. Hello, and welcome to this meditation. Big goals for your future. Visualizing them come into fruition. And understanding how to bring them to full reality. Slowly allow your eyes to close down. Take a deep breath in. Fully expanding the lungs and chest. And then slowly... Release. I'll have a link down below if you guys want to do it as well. But honestly, I feel really, really clear-headed. Write my goals out right now. I just feel really cleansed. Honestly, meditation really does wonders. If you're ever feeling stressed or in a bad mood, put on a positive mindset meditation or just like a relaxing one and it'll make you feel so much better. And you can find any meditation free on YouTube, so there's no excuse. One of my goals is definitely going to be to meditate more because I've been really slacking on it. And every time I do it, it reminds me how good it is. So this is your sign to try meditation. It's not at all hippie, like I promise. It'll make you feel so good. I wanted to quickly talk about ways that you can raise your vibration. Having a high vibration is essential for manifesting, for being happy, and just attracting positive and good things into your life. And if you guys didn't already know, there's such thing as a vibration scale. And that goes to show you the lowest to the highest possible vibration. And I think a lot of people have had, you know, moments in their life where they're at the top and at the bottom, just depending, you know, what's happening in your life. But I feel like a lot of people really just kind Kind of stagger there in the middle of this chart because if you don't make a conscious effort to do things to help you be happy and raise your vibration it's not really something that just happens overnight naturally so these are some ways that you can raise your vibration i never feel more aligned and just more myself more happy than when i operate at high vibration when i operate at a high vibration things just come into my life i get money for free just being thrown at me magical things start to happen one of the things that you can do to raise your vibration is remove Remove toxic people from your life, especially thinking of the people that you surround yourself with. In a way, the people that you surround yourself with are what you become like and you kind of pick up characteristics from them and you kind of start to become one if you spend a lot of time with that person. And so be very, very cautious on who you spend your time with because it does rub off on you even without you knowing. So make sure to hang out with somebody who you authentically really like being around, who motivates you, who pushes you, who you can have a good time with, who you can have fun with. Hang around people that don't suck your energy rather than sucking your energy you want to hang out with people that actually you can kind of exchange your energies with and you benefit each other in a positive way this is not a better time to cut people out like that and to really rethink who you're friends with and who you're spending your time with because your time is so precious and valuable your energy is so precious and valuable really think about who you're giving that to and going into the new year is the perfect time another way to start raising your vibration is think about what truly makes you happy and start doing more of it because a lot of the times we choose chase materialistic things thinking that those are going to be like a one-stop shop making us happy but that's not the case really connect with yourself and try to think of even if it's like a new hobby what is really going to elevate your mood every single day and think of things that truly make you happy that don't have to do with money that don't have to do with materialistic things and that can even be spending more time in nature or painting or whatever it is you know expressing yourself creatively whatever it is find that out and start doing more of it and that'll just automatically raise your vibration instead of constantly chasing more money and chasing more materialistic things you can have the goal of having you know more abundance and all that but that goal is not going to come true unless you achieve a high vibration 
action anyways. And on the other side of that, eliminate things in your life that you're doing that don't make you happy. I know there's some things that it feels like almost impossible to get out of, like if you're in a job right now that you just really hate. Try your best to kind of disassociate with that. And when you go to work every day, just try to have the best positive mindset about it while also simultaneously doing something that is going to get you out of that position. Hopefully you can find a new job or something. But yeah, so I do understand how that point is sometimes hard for people, but it's not impossible. And as long as the effort is there, it will happen. Another way to raise your vibration, this is super cliche, but exercising honestly helps me raise my vibration a lot because like in a way it just releases a lot of energy and like pent up stuck energy. After exercising, I just feel so happy. The mm -hmm. best way to explain it is raising your vibration is basically doing anything that has a long term payoff over a short term. If it's like, oh, it would make me really happy in this moment to not work out today. That might raise your vibration in that moment because you're going to be feeling happier, but you know that in three hours you're going to be feeling like shit. Mm -hmm. But when you work out, it's a win-win because you feel good that you did it mm -hmm. and you actually feel good because your body did it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like you guys just heard, long term over short term, so important to think about. Nowadays, we're just so addicted to instant dopamine that it's like we don't do anything that we're long term going to be thankful for anymore. Another way to raise vibration is meditation because it just essentially clears your mind of any thoughts. So you're going to automatically just be, be kind of vibrating a little bit higher. An obvious one is just to kind of operate out of love just in general. Raising your vibration is just so important. You're not going to get all of your manifestations unless you can raise your vibration and step into the person that you want to be. Also, listening to your emotional guidance system is really, really important. When the thought of something or doing something makes you super happy, it means it's aligned with you. And when the thought of something and the opposite of that, when doing something makes you really sad or angry, that just goes to show that it's not in alignment with you and your higher purpose. Anyways, I hope that made sense and I hope you got some good information out of that, but raising your vibration is key and will be key for me to achieve and accomplish my goals and have my manifestations come into fruition i have my journal back which i'm going to be writing in the exact same journal as i did last year like i already said just because i want this to be like a yearly journal and personally for me i just really like physically writing down my goals as opposed to writing them on a computer i just feel like it's more personal that way and also writing stuff down almost makes me process it better than not writing it down and just kind of typing it out but i just like the idea of having a physical copy rather than it being on my computer for once because everything i do is on my computer so it's nice to kind of separate the two so i'm gonna put my goals in a couple categories so i'm gonna do finance spiritual health social media i'm also gonna go on pinterest right now and see if i can find any good new year kind of journal prompt okay let's do this <laughs> To this if i think of more things even in january february like you can always add to it it's not a one and done situation if you think of new things it's pretty simple and plain the way that i did it nothing too extravagant but this is what works for me i will share a couple of my goals with you guys for my health and wellness some of my goals are to keep working out three to five times a week to continue doing my no gluten and no dairy diets since it completely cleared my eczema limit my social media use especially during the day i don't want to be aimlessly scrolling like that's so hard resist sometimes but that's really a goal of mine in 2024 is not to get so consumed with social media and it's just so important what we consume i want to read instead of scroll on my phone 30 minutes before bed all in all really just have a balance with everything for my spiritual goals i want to meditate more frequently because that really just helps clear my mind and puts me in more of a manifestation portal i want to find gratitude and happiness in my everyday life and be happy with
with essentially nothing. I realized that as humans, we chase things. We chase materialistic things and we think that those are gonna make us happy. But then once we actually get there and get that thing, whatever it is, you think that it's just automatically gonna make you happy. But happiness doesn't come from external things. Happiness comes from inside. And I know it sounds really cheesy, but it's so true. If you guys wanna find pure, real happiness, getting a new car isn't gonna do that for you. It could give you temporary happiness, will probably make you really happy for a few weeks, but that's not gonna last. So I really wanna work on this year, just finding real happiness within my day-to-day -day life and not so much relying on buying new clothes, you know, getting a new car, thinking that's gonna make me happy and just really find happiness within myself and gratitude within my everyday life. I want to listen and consume and just read more spirituality content because that's what really keeps me motivated and really helps my brain subconsciously maintain a good positive mindset and manifest. I realized that I kind of fell off the, that bandwagon a bit, especially towards the end of the year. And so I really want to start reading more books that has to do with spirituality and just like consume more of that content because that's the type of content I should be consuming rather than like aimlessly scrolling for what, you know? And I just want to be very, very cautious with that this year because I realized that when I am reading a good book that has to do with like our vibrations and like learning, I just really, really feel good for travel. I want to at least go on one vacation this year. I'm not really aiming to travel much next year, but I definitely want to do something. We'll see, but I'm not like really heavily focused on that this year. I really just feel like I want to put my head down and kind of go grind mode, really work on myself this year, put all my effort into that and also the content that I'm creating because I want to really, really grow in every way this year. I want to blossom. Every single day that you do something, it compounds into your future. Even though it may not seem like it in the moment, it may seem like you're doing nothing. It's like working out every day. You can look in the mirror after every single workout and you're not going to notice a difference. But then a few months down the line, you're going to really realize and look back at photos and maybe be even a lot more happier that you're working out and it's kind of like a gradual thing and every single day you don't notice the difference but over time you do i'm thinking about starting a podcast i'm putting that out there as a maybe because why not i've had a lot of people ask me to do one and it's something that i've been kind of going back and forth with in my head for a while but this might be the year with these kind of things you just kind of have to start it have a bit of a plan but at the end of the day like you just have to start it and get going that's my best advice for doing anything in life by the way if you have a goal like don't wait to do it just start it now even if you don't have the best equipment to do it starting is better than doing nothing let me know if you guys would listen to that because i would definitely do it more motivational oriented manifestation kind of a mix of that and i don't know i just kind of have a really good idea for it and what i would talk about and it would be like a good opportunity to let you guys in more on my life and talk about how i manifest in my dream life more and how you could too because i truly believe that you can do it anything you set your mind to and taking risks in life is probably one of the best things that you could do yeah we'll see and then for my social media goals i'm gonna keep those a little bit private you know the gist of it is to put out the best content that i could put out and i also want to focus a lot more on short form content this year too so follow me on all the short form platforms every all my social medias are down below and then i also have financial goals which are private as well but obviously i want to do well for myself every year i want to improve <laughs> yeah that's basically the gist of my goals and and like I said, this is not a one and done, you know, template. I'm going to be definitely adding to this as I think if I think of more things. I think goal setting is just so important. Having a reason why we do things in life. If one of your goals is to get into a routine and wake up early every day, you're not going to be able to do it if you don't have a why behind that. So if you ever feel unmotivated throughout the year, you can pick your goals up and look through them and realize why you're doing what you're doing. This is going to be really interesting to reflect back on these next year. But anyway. Now we're gonna move on to making our vision board. I want that to reflect what I kind of just wrote down and like my vibe for the year. I really like making my vision board on the computer. I used to do an actual physical copy of it, but I realized that I really have nowhere to store them year after year and then they just get thrown in a closet. So doing it digitally has just been my favorite way because then I know I can store it forever and I can always refer back to it. I can put it as my laptop wallpaper or if I want a physical copy of it, I can even print it out. But obviously it's personal preference. What I do to make this is I go on Pinterest and I just scroll through photos until I find some that really align with my vision. I'll 
type stuff in of what I want to manifest in my life and look at photos through there but really just try to get yourself inspired and you can even look on Google and then I transport my photos onto this app called PicMonkey and I make a collage on there you can use any collage app you can even do Canva and just make it into a collage you can even do this vertically for your phone and horizontally I ended up writing 2024 in the middle of it and I just I'm obsessed with how it came out it really is like bringing my vision to life and I also included some quotes which I really like and yeah I would really recommend doing a vision board if you have never done one before because you would be really surprised by the end of the year when you look at it and you realize how many pictures that you put on there that you didn't even realize came into fruition and it's really really cool to look at at the end of the year and also throughout the year so make sure you're putting it somewhere where you can visually see it every day or at least often hey guys so i'm just currently sitting in the car with joel the next part of the reset that i want to do is a digital clean out one part to that is refining who you follow on social media we're basically scrolling on social media every waking breathing second that we possibly can so at least if you're scrolling you should be consuming good content rather than content that is making you upset what i'm gonna do before the new year starts is go through my phone and kind of look on all my social media platforms youtube instagram tiktok and see who i'm following and unfollow the creators and just like accounts that I don't need to surround myself with anymore you maybe even I'll go and find people that will motivate me and that their videos will actually benefit me when I open these social media apps so I think that's a really important thing because if you open your phone in the morning and you see content that doesn't resonate with you or is gonna set you up to have a bad day then that is not a good thing and you want to make sure that you're really being careful about what you consume because it affects us more than we think just making sure that your feed is up to par with who you want to be and what you want to consume so that's what I'm gonna be doing and also second part to that digital detox can be just honestly to do a little refresh of your home screen on your phone and delete the apps that you don't want anymore clear some storage transport some photos just to have like a clean slate for the start of the year also organizing your laptop or your workspace would be good sometimes my digital spaces like on my phone and on my laptop it's almost like clutter in real life it makes me have anxiety to go on it that makes a huge difference to just the feeling of me opening my laptop to work something little as just changing the background on my computer makes such a big difference for me nowadays like on the new update on your phone there's so many cool adjustments that you can do to the home screen and the lock screen so you can make your phone a really nice space for yourself and you can even put changing affirmations change the color of the time little things like that really do make a difference so i would suggest doing that just switching the things up that you can to make this feel like a clean slate and a fresh start we use technology all the time especially if you use your laptop and stuff for work or school even it's just really important to have that fresh feeling just like cleaning a house i hope you guys enjoyed resetting with me for 2024 i'm so excited for this new year and the amazing energy that it's gonna bring i hope everybody has the best new year ever and make sure to bring positive vibes with you into the new year thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to subscribe for motivational content coming in january and put on your bell notifications for when i post i love you guys so much and thank you for watching until this point in the video and i will see you in my next one.